and just like that, a very pleasant good evening and welcome to a Friday night edition of the Ultimate Hockey Show, otherwise known as the 2024 Stanley Cup Playoff Preview Show, brought to you by your favorite, usually Monday radio show, uh, slash podcast here on the Game Time TV channel of Networks. I'm Michael Gill, joined by Red Petty. Good evening, Red. How are you? Very good. How about you, Michael? Good. Long time no see, even though I just saw you uh, a little under 21 hours at Yeah, we were at the Jets game together. Kind of. But together. that was uh, pretty, pretty dead. Um, obviously, we sitting in different seats in different parts of the arena, but we saw the same game. Um, yep. I thought it would be appropriate to start right there. Uh, we do have some breaking news. There is a press conference currently ongoing at the time of this uh, show from the Delta Center in Utah. We'll touch on that in just a minute. I have it on on the monitor here, um, which nobody can see, but I can see. So if I'm looking uh, straight, what would be to my right? That's what I'm looking at. Um, but that being said, what did you think of the week that it was for the Winnipeg Jets? Obviously ending off with two more wins, bringing that win streak over to eight games. Yeah. Um, I, I know, Rick, you and I had this discussion when they lost six in a row about, you know, can they turn it on? It seemed like they were going in the same direction um, as last year, you know, fading down the stretch, potentially fading into the playoffs. Um, that, that kind of thing, but I, I don't think in the wildest dreams, given the schedule that the Jets had, and we'll relay a couple of it, Dallas, uh, Colorado, Nashville, Vancouver, you know, these weren't just your, the bottom of the lead. And yet, uh, with a couple of dicey games in there, of course, uh, the Jets were able to win them all. Um setting themselves up quite nicely for the playoffs. I, I think, Rick, in hindsight, that also benefited the Winnipeg Jets, playing up to their competition, playing strong competition down the stretch to get ready for the playoffs. And I don't know. I If you would have said, hey, the Jets would lose uh, eight in a row, or sorry, six in a row, 0-5-1, and, and then go on to win their last eight games, I would have said you were crazy. But it did happen, and yep. to be honest, I, I don't think it's impressive that they've won eight in a row. I I think it's impressive the way they've done it, more so than the results. Uh, your thoughts on where we are heading now? Well, 48 hours from now, we'll probably be in the second period of game one against the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah. yeah no, it, it was. It was. Um, I, I, you know what? I. As I've gotten older, I sort of, I, probably a lot of people can relate to this, is the, the same as when you're at work, right? You, you have a, a day at work that's really bad, and then you have a day at work that's really, really good. And really, the truth is probably somewhere in between. You should never get too sad on a really bad work day, like you lose a deal or something goes wrong or a presentation goes sideways, because you're never as bad as your worst day. And you're never really probably, if you're honest about it, never really as good as your very best day. You know, you're a little bit, you're more in the mushy middle. And so it's important not to get too high with the highs or too low with the lows and maintain sort of an even keel. And that's why, you know, the Jets went 0-5-1. And, and I just thought, you know, in those games, like if you look at them when they went on that streak, yeah, there were some bad games in there. But the last few games, like they didn't play – horrible like against Edmonton they lost in overtime Ottawa 3-2 like they were in that game the Vegas game it ended up being 4-1 but you know they were in it until the third period is where Vegas pulled away it was 1-1 in the third period if I recall so I'm just saying yep. like some of those games at the beginning there where they lost like 4-1 to New Jersey that was awful and th that's when I was on away on holidays and then the Islanders they got bombed by them 6-3 the Islanders and why three nothing like those were awful games but the last three weren't that bad and so you say oh five and one man if they had just won a couple of those it wouldn't have been such a big deal they would have gone two three and one right as opposed to oh five and one been a little bit more um 
or closer to 500 on that on that stretch they would have been right there with uh i think then they would have won um the central division and i think they would have overcome uh Dallas with just winning 500 in those six games or, or ending up 500 in those six games. So all that to say, I don't think they were that bad when they lost the six in a row. And now this last eight in a row, it's just been, they've played playoff hockey. I heard the players saying, the coach is saying like, we're just getting in this mindset of this is the way we got to play in order to be successful in the playoffs. And it's even going to get harder to turn that on or play it that way. When we get to the playoffs, we got to start playing it now watching our own end first, helping each other out, making sure we clear the puck, making sure we move the puck really quick when we get in our own zone. And they've done all that. And there are times when it kind of falls. I mean, no team is a robot, right? They don't go 100% perfect every game. But, you know, like the game last night, they sat out a whole bunch of regulars, brought in some guys that were from the Black Aces and then a few guys from, from the Moose. And... They still played that way, and they played really well. And they and they played defensively. Vancouver didn't have a lot. I don't know what you saw, but I mean, they didn't have Miller and Bozer in the lineup, but they had uh, uh, both Hughes and Peterson, and or Pedersen. And I mean, except for the play or for the power play, where you, they kind of room to do a little bit of dancing and move the puck around. Five on five, like I, I didn't even notice. Elias Pedersen. I, I didn't notice him doing anything like setting up a guy or making a great play five on five. I, he was invisible. Now you could say, okay, it's the last game of the season. They're not playing for anything. I get it. He's probably wanting to stay injury free and whatever, but the Jets, I don't think it gave Vancouver much. And that goes the same for the last, the other last seven games. They have not given the other teams a lot to score. They end up still Jets. You know where they get scored on? is when they're killing a penalty. They give up a power play goal almost every game, but five on five, they're they're like amazing. So, you know, the, for sure the lesson is play as much five on five as possible. And if you get a penalty called against you, make sure you kill it off and, and you'll win the game. Last night, that was the first power play goal that, that uh, Lindholm power play goal was the first in 13 man opportunity in the loud. So, Seems like the penalty kill has turned the corner. The power play last night in particular looked pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You're saying that goal that they allowed by Lindholm, that's the first one in 13 attempts. Yeah. Penalties against them? Yeah, 13 attempts against them. So okay. it, it, feel, it feels like they kind of turned the corner. And even, you know, it was the 20th shot the flat did. Um, not too yeah. much. A lot of goaltenders can do about a deflection either. Um, other than still, made, uh, other than it's made, still not good enough. It's still Colorado. Right. I will talk about, but Colorado is fifth best on the power play and the twelfth best on the penalty kill in the league this year, and and that's significantly ahead of where the Jets are in in both categories. So that to me is the only thing. That makes the Jets vulnerable is penalty kill and power play. Five on five and net mining and defensive play, the Jets are miles ahead of Colorado. But if this if this seven game series turns into a, a special teams uh, um, display, then I think the Jets are in big trouble. So we'll see. Oh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on quickly. Yeah, uh, Nikita Chibikov, Brad Lambert making their NHL debuts. What did you think of both of them? I know it's one game. I know it's, you know, it's just an opportunity to preserve people uh, with their help and give some young guys who have been doing good things with the Moose an opportunity. So we'll qualify that. What did you think of those two? Yeah, I I think they they um they played really well. They they played yeah. really really well. Yeah, and I I think when you play really well, you open up the opportunity for depth within the organization, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. and I would say this too though, like th this is the thing. It, it's both of their first uh, NHL level games. Their parents are both, or for sure, 
Lambert's parents were, I'm not sure if Chibrikov's parents came from Russia. I mean, maybe, I don't know, probably not, but um, that they probably saw it overseas. But anyway, um, they each were flying. Like I've been to Moose games this year. Chibrikov and Lambert, you know, they're, they're good players, but they didn't stand out in the Moose game. And you'd think if they were that amazing, they would have stood out in the AHL game, but it was part of the AHL grind. But now you get to your first NHL game. It's a different story. You play a little with a little bit more pep in your step. And Chibrikov, he gets the winning goal. And Lambert, he assists on the tying goal. So even um, though it took a while to declare that. Um yeah, which was strange because it was obvious to everybody. Everybody around us was saying, and, and my dad included was saying, like, didn't Lambert push that into the corner before um uh so and so threw it out to uh Velarde, whoever it was that pushed it out to Velarde? And I said, Yeah, it was in the corner that he's the one that shoveled it over. I, I don't I don't get it, but whatever. Yeah, you know, they figured it out eventually, so it was good, but no, but Better. they had a little bit more to play for. They're playing in front of their home crowd. Vancouver just looked, you know what? Vancouver looked really uninterested. Nobody was really, even on the Jets, nobody was really paying a heavy price. There were a few times in the game where it got a little bit, you know, there was a lot of push. I said, oh, this like feels like a playoff game, just how much hustle there is in fighting for every inch of ice and every puck. But there were a lot of times in the game where it was also a little bit meh. So that's. Yeah. All right, so overall, with the Winnipeg Jets higher franchise record from 2018 and overall victories at 52, and they finished fourth overall in the NHL, second overall in the Western Conference, one point ahead of Vancouver, and points behind Dallas. Um, overall, has this regular season exceeded your expectations? Uh, well, uh, if you look at who picked the Jets to make the playoffs and and uh, who didn't, uh, then you could – and I have that paper from way back. Okay. I uh, let's, let, let's... And it says okay. right here, Rick picks Winnipeg out of the center. In fact, this is kind of interesting. We'll talk about this if we're going to go through this. Out of all my picks of who's going to make the – I didn't put um, – what the rankings were going to be like, who's going to be the wild card. Who's not, you pick that. I just picked, these are the top eight teams from each uh, conference. Yep. The only one in, um, in here, let me see here. The only one that I got wrong was I picked Calgary in instead of picking who got it. Oh, Vancouver. So Vancouver, not picking Vancouver, but the other seven teams, Colorado, Winnipeg, L.A., Nashville, Dallas, Edmonton, Rick, boom, nailed it. Yeah. Michael you know what, Garrel, let's, go, let's go through Michael that Garrel, right now. Boom. Michael Garrell, he picked Colorado, Dallas, and Nashville, but he picked wah, wah, Minnesota as the other team from the Central. And you picked Edmonton, Vegas, and Los Angeles, but – Wah, wah. you pick Calgary instead of Vancouver. So you got two wrong. I got one wrong. How, how did we do out East while we're on this? Topic? Out East, it was not, since we're talking about out East, wasn't as good for neither one of us or either one of us. Um, we both got only half the teams, right? This is kind of interesting. You and I both were talking about how we th really thought this was the year that the Sabres would put together their youth with their veterans and really make a push with, um, how long and Ottawa as well. And so I picked the Leafs, the Rangers, Carolina, and Florida correctly, but I picked Ottawa, Pittsburgh, New Jersey, and Buffalo instead of whoever got in, which would have been Tampa Bay, the Islanders, Washington, and the Bruins. Those were the four that I got wrong. And you picked yep. you picked Ottawa, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo um, as well. But yeah, so you only, you and I only got four right out, out of the Eastern Conference, which kind of makes sense, right? Because there were a lot more fails this year, if you will, in the Eastern Conference than the West. Like everybody thought the Devils would continue on with their progression after having such a great year last year, right? That was, that was just a no brainer that the Sabres were on the move up. And then the Penguins, after acquiring Carlson, we thought, okay, one more push. They're going to get into the playoffs for sure. 
so, but it just didn't happen. And we all thought, both of you and I thought that the Bruins were just going to fall off the face of the earth with their two veteran centermen retiring. And you know what? It's like they never missed a beat. Hey, I mean, it's just incredible. The Bruins, they just find ways to win. They play that way that Bruin hockey and they just keep winning. So but, can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Michael, are you there? There we go. Now I can hear you again. Sorry, my audio uh, is a little bit uh, discombobulated at the minute. Um, yeah, so, okay, can you still hear me okay? I can now, no problem. Okay, I tried to adjust my earpieces here, uh, okay. as we go. Um, you bet. Let's see, hang on a second, I'm gonna. Okay, I think we're good now. Okay. Um. Yeah, your voice is coming across scratchy, so I'm trying to figure that. Oh, figure I'm sorry. That. Okay, that's on my end. Okay. Um, but yeah, else. no, I I think uh, the teams that we expected more from Audis didn't quite perform to expectations, um, which I I think we're guilty because I I think if you look at sort of what um sort of the pits that we made, particularly Ottawa, particularly Buffalo, um, both of which, you know, you could make an argument had sort of false assessments made. At that point of, they had strong finishes uh, from the previous season, which we hope would carry over. That obviously didn't happen. Uh, we had certain teams that we we're expecting to fall out of the race, uh, which didn't. And I think trial by error, this is what you come up with. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to ditch my audio system. Hang on a minute. Whoop. Okay. Yeah. Try it out. How's that one? Okay. That's better for my ear now. Okay. So, all said and done, how would you surmise the regular season in the National Hockey League as a whole? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I I mean, I, I don't watch, I watch games, but I, don't, I see more highlights. I can't watch every game that's played. I don't have NHL, um, like the NHL uh, channel where I can just watch games nonstop. I mean, as much as I'd love to, I have a life, right? And, I, and I'm married. <laughs> I got a full-time job. <laughs> I got some responsibilities beyond just watching NHL hockey all day long and all evening. But that being said, I watch all the Jet games, watch a ton of highlights. So I, I get to actually see every other team at least once throughout the year, usually twice. Because I think Jets play every other team at least twice, once home, once away from what I think happens. So, so yeah, I get to see a lot. And I would say overall, I would say the game is in a really good place. I, I've just noticed, though, teams are just, in general, getting younger and younger. Teams just cannot afford this whole, oh, we need veterans, we need veterans. You know when teams line up veterans? At the uh, you know, the trade deadline. That's when you acquire somebody because there's, no, um, there, there's no limit on the amount of players, and you could just load up as long as you're under the salary cap. And... Got, or the teams go out and they get their veterans um, at the trade deadline to kind of supplement what they have. But teams are going young. They're cheaper. They're um, they're not as injury prone. And I'm just seeing it. Teams are way younger. If you looked at the median age of every team now as compared to 20 years ago, I bet there's probably a five year difference because there's not many guys that play over the age of 32. Like I remember back 20 years ago, Tons of guys played over 30 years old. Now it, it's not that much anymore. And it's not because 
they're injured and they're and they're all worn down. It's because they make too much money and the teams just say, you know, why am I going to pay a guy 30, 32 years old, pay him $5 million a year and he's lost a step where I can get a guy at 22 years old for half the amount of money or less on an entry level deal. That's what I'm going to fill my team with. So that's what I've seen. And I've also seen more skill that's been shown. I don't know how you've seen it, but I'm just seeing because there's more room on the ice, there's more penalties called, um, there's less hooking allowed during the regular season. I think that changes once you get in the playoffs, and I guess we'll see that again shortly. But you're seeing more talent on display, so talented players can shine and can show their skill and can help their teams win. That's another thing I've seen. And the other thing that I do not like saying is that the refing is still – it's it's worse now, I think, personally, than it's ever been. And maybe it's just certain refs and certain – pairings or whatever it is but this whole idea of having to even steve in a game and one team's up two to nothing oh the next time that the other team that or the team that's up to nothing does anything like just skates and and has a funny look on his face as he skates by a guy from the other team they're going to call him for a penalty like it's it's ridiculous. It's this whole thing of let's make the game competitive. Let's try and even Steven it out, see if we can get a goal on the board to make the game 2-1 instead of 2 nothing. That's almost what it looks like. I don't know if the refs think that way, but that's how it looks like. And it, and they're not good penalties. If they were good penalties, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But they're cheapy, cheapy penalties, chicken wing penalties, guys getting a stick under the arm, and then the guy pinches the stick in there. Like in the game yesterday when uh, Logan Stanley got called for hooking. I mean, it was a joke. Logan Stanley just looked at the ref like, are you serious? Because the guy, you saw the replay. I even saw he grabbed Logan Stanley's stick blade under his arm, grabbed it, and started pulling it and holding it so that Stanley couldn't get it back out. And then he went down, and then he got called, and then the guy got a penalty called against Stanley from it. So to me, it, how many refs do you need on the ice? We used to have one ref on the ice. Now we have two. We have all the replays in the world, and we still can't get calls right. So whatever. I guess it's the same. You know what? It's probably like Major League Baseball. You're going to have some umps that call a, a ball a strike and a strike a ball, and they're just it's it's human. It's That's all you say. It's human error, and it is what it is. But anyway, that's my venting. How about for you? What did you see in the NHL this year that you liked? I learned, and this kind of ties into it. You can hear me, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know I had to ditch the sound system I was using because um, I, I couldn't hear any of what you were saying for some bizarre reason. Um, but, no, I what I learned is things changed very quickly in the National Hockey League. Um, and over the last month, the – NHL has been in discussion with Salt Lake City about acquiring the rights to the Arizona Coyotes hockey-related assets, and they were able to close the deal. So the Jets have a new division rival in the team from Salt Lake City, Utah, which doesn't have a name yet. Um, so we didn't play at the Delta Center uh, in Salt Lake next year, as in this fall. And we learned at the press conference just now uh, about a half an hour, hour ago, that the, uh, that the uh, team has already accepted 22,000 season ticket deposits in just over, excuse me, 24 hours. Uh, so for a rink that only holds 12 to 14,000 for hockey, depending. I yeah. Heard of it as much as 14. I don't know about you, but yeah, so they said that the building gonna have about 12,000 uninstructed hockey seats plus quarter and half season passes, and then, uh, with the goal of getting it within the next two years to about 17,000 once they re imagine the entire arena plus the downtown. The hope is to get that building to about 17,500. Uh, Oh, as opposed to as as opposed to making a new arena, they're going to put in all that money. Yeah, that's so that's what they're because it, okay. so, it sounds like that Utah is going to be getting the twenty thirty two, or at least put in a bid so at least as for the twenty thirty two Olympics. So, 
So their timing is around that to basically get a new arena and then make use of the Delta Center, which is one of the premier venues in the NBA as far as sight lines go uh, for the Utah Jazz. Uh, so it, it's good that uh, the Arizona situation is tentatively put on hold and the players get to go uh, to a more NHL-friendly owner um, and a more NHL-friendly situation. And after 26 years uh, of a failed experiment, um, this is where we wind up. Yeah. But what's interesting and I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's not the same as Atlanta going to Winnipeg. It's not no. a complete relocation. It's this, they've called it a hybrid. They've called, I don't know, they've had it a whole bunch of ways. Of yeah, so what they've, what they've done, is they've in essence created a new franchise, which is the 33rd franchise in the NHL. They have temporarily closed up operations of the Arizona Coyotes and the deal is for the hotly related assets to be purchased by Ryan and Ashley Smith of the Utah group and put them into their Utah franchise with the hope of starting up again in five years or less the Arizona Coyotes franchise. So, right. But there are some caveats to that, though, which is really interesting. So the Smith family or the Smith uh, sport entertainment group, whatever they're called there, um, the Ryan Smith and his wife and whoever else is part of that, um, they paid a million dollars for the billion. franchise. Pardon? Or sorry, a billion dollars for the franchise. And then an additional 200, money, 200 million dollars in relo relocation fees, which go to all the teams. So each team gets roughly, what is that? About six and a half million dollars. It's not a lot per team, but... If you think about 32 teams or 31 teams times uh, or divide or divide uh, divide 200 million by 31 teams, that's roughly, I don't know, 608 or 6.8 million, something like that. I don't know what the math is. I should do it. Are you doing it or no? I'm, do I'm doing the calculation as we're talking. Divided by 31. And your number each is each team gets six point five million, roughly. Yeah. Six point five million, which is not which is enough to pay maybe one or two players for one season. It's not a lot of money. But here's the other caveat is so that they pay a billion for the franchise, they get it, all the assets, the the players, the equipment, all that stuff that they can move, whatever, and they own that that they have a franchise now. It's not going to be taken away from them. That's fine. But the guy who owns the Coyotes, this Burr, what's Alex name? Borello? Burr, I was going to say Burr line, but it's Borello. You're right. Borello, he's got a caveat in here that says he can reacquire the, or reactivate, I guess for lack of a better word, reactivate his Coyotes franchise for the same amount of money that he sold it for, $1 billion. That's what he takes. He could pay uh, $1 billion anytime in the next five years. But he has to have finished building the hockey rink, the new hockey rink. And so you think about how long does it take to make a hockey rink like that? Two to three years? Yep. A good two years to build it, maybe more. So let's say, two, so let's just say with hiccups and everything, I think mean, he's going to make a big sporting center or whatever in Arizona, get some land. He's going to get all these people investing with him. He's got to start that bus like putting shovels in the ground in two years to be done in five years to be able to. And most people do not think that he's going to make that happen because if he had could have made that happen, why didn't he make that happen in the last five years? Right. He has had years to do it now suddenly because he loses the team. Now suddenly it's all going to work out. I don't think so, but they do the right thing. They give him an out. And they give him for the same price that he got it. It's just a complete wash. What he gets is what he pays to be reactivated. But if I'm if I'm forced to bet, I do not put money on that horse because I do not believe he's going to land and find investors and put that all together within the next two years to get a shovel in the ground 
two years from now to be finished five years from now for him to tell Bettman and Daly and the rest of the NHL, we're ready to go. What is that? Um, September or October, 2029, right? It would have to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. 2029. It ain't going to happen. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, it could surprise me, but interesting yeah, dynamic. Yeah. I don't know if you listened to any of the press conference today, but he's <laughs> been pretty defiant. Um, Defined in what way? Well, he was at the pretty basic question about refunds and seemed to stumble on, you know, how to answer the question. Uh, he said, just give me some time. Give me some time. I need some time to breathe. This is a lot. This is very stressful. To me... I don't see any way that they vote him back in after everything that's happened. Now, they made sure to kind of go out of their way to kind of build them up a little bit to say that, you know, if it wasn't for the arena issue, we'd still be here. Uh, he said, well, we feel that Arizona could be a top 10 revenue generator market-wise, you know, in a, in, a, in a proper arena. I don't know, Rich. I'm with you. I think it's very skeptical. I, I think the NHL goes back to Arizona, uh, but I don't think it'll be with Mr. Morello uh, leading the way. Uh, right. But he's got, but see, but this is interesting. So you say that they've got it, like in essence, if you, if you read that agreement, you read how it goes, he's basically got five years. So what whatever happens, happens. But he, like, I guess what I'm saying is it, it's an interesting it's an interesting animal because they want to make it work in Arizona so they they give him because he's part of the ownership group currently for the whole league um they give him 5 years so like you and I are talking it'll take probably 2 to 3 years to build that arena it says in there at least what i read that the rink must be ready to go within 5 years which means they got to get the shovels in the ground in by Whatever that is, seven hundred and um, well, first off, whatever days first like off, from now. Once, just no, no, but let me finish my yeah. point. Just let me finish my point. They got to yeah. get the shelf on the ground to do that. But now you're talking about well, they don't really like him. Da da da. If they liked him and they wanted him, and so let's say that he has nothing done yet after year two, but he's got something on the hopper. Maybe they extend some grace. Maybe they push it along a little bit longer. I agree with you. It's possible. But there's going to come a point well before five years is up that they know he's not going to be able to uh, come to the plate because if you're at the end of year four and he still doesn't have land and he still doesn't have partners and he still doesn't have a shovel in the ground, they're not going to build a 20,000 seat arena and sporting complex and entertainment center and blah, 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 blah in uh, Arizona in a year. It's just not going to happen. So they're going to either have to extend. So if he nails down it and see, this is why I think this thing is kind of fluid. It's not like they've got five years nailed down, but it all depends on him. Like you say, it depends on the relationship. If he's working and working at getting something done, he's not done by year two when he should be done to be done at five years. Now he gets something done in year four. Maybe they, they like him and they extend him grace and they say, okay, we'll wait another couple of years for you to bring that franchise around. We'll wait another two years. But I agree with you. I think they're just doing this for the time being and I could see them very easily pulling the plug and just at five years saying, thanks a lot. And now we're going to go in another direction. But if you go in another direction, you get a new ownership group there. They put, uh, they do their land development. They, it'll still be another three years after the five years. We are not going to see a hockey tie, a hockey team in Arizona. I hate to tell people this, Easily, not for another eight years. Yeah, I, I listen. I just have a hard time seeing it. Even it, he would have to win that land auction in June to get the process started. Because if he doesn't win that land auction in June, the process basically goes to percentage one again. So he has financing. He just doesn't have a spot to uh, put his rink and to put his entertainment center. Yeah, because the. Uh, the referendum in uh, the referendum that they voted on to get the arena with the public financing got shot down, and that's what this kind of kind of amounted to. This uh, anyway. Okay. That being said, the playoffs begin tomorrow on two fronts. 
Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders will be playing, and the Leafs and the Bruins. Let's run quickly through the series starting in the East. And I present to you the New York Rangers, the first in the Metropolitan. Hitting on the team, but, well, everybody kind of expected, I guess, if you will, to make the playoffs, but not necessarily in the way that they got it done in the negative goal differential, uh, among other things. Um, your thoughts on this series between the Rangers and the Capitals? Um, well, just to give some context, because I – I, I remember reading this about somebody, you know, everybody has emotion and it's interesting, but I don't like making decisions on emotion. I like using facts because they don't tend to change that much. They tend to be pretty consistent. Emotions can be one way or another. So just looking at the facts here, if I pull this up, just here's one nugget for you. Um, in goal differential, Washington is by far the worst team in the playoffs. In fact, they are one of only two teams in the playoffs with a negative goal differential and by far the worst at minus 37. The Rangers are at plus 53. So over 82 games, there's a goal separation for and against between those two teams of 90 goals. So that's just one nugget for you. Just think about that for a second. Um, what's really interesting, Washington, it, when they've won games, they've won very close games. When they've lost games, they've gotten bombed, which is why they have that minus 37 um, goal differential. So... Just on paper, uh, the Rangers have better goaltending. The Rangers have better defense. The Rangers have um, more complete lines with more balanced scoring. The Rangers have overall more team speed. And the Rangers are also very hungry and motivated after coming very close last year and being knocked out. So to me, on paper, factually speaking, um, this series is not close at all. How do you see it? Yeah, I see this as one of the most uh, lopsided series um, on paper. But Washington with OV, Washington to me looked like a team on fumes. Um Relative to the Rangers, who are just deeper, stronger, better. Uh, all the metrics seem to shape up uh, advantage New York Rangers. Yep. I just, like, to me, this is almost a situation of uh, welcome to the playoffs. This will be an extra two weeks. Enjoy the ride. But I don't see this ending well for the Capitals. There you go. And I think this has the ability to be the most lopsided series of the first round. Well, if you look at it, I mean, overall, um, let me just look at even, like I, I talked about goal differential. There's the biggest separation of goal differential because Washington is by far the worst team. Let's look at even... Um, points from first place so that's what is that uh, 12 okay this is uh, 91 23 points yeah so there it's also by far the greatest separation in points in the season between the two teams in any series like i agree with you it's the most unevenly matched series of the opening round so are we ready to make the pit I was ready yesterday already. This was the this one for me was the easiest one. It was even the easiest one when it came not just to who would win, but the number of games. I didn't even think twice about it. So, but anyway. Yeah, I'm the one Washington losing this series. Rangers, very lucky 
Rangers will probably spot them at Demon Washington, but I'm going cap or going sorry. I am going the New York Rangers to win the series in five games. And look. Oh, I should put I should do like this. That's what Rick did. Identical. So there you yep. go. I shouldn't okay. show you. And you could see if I go like this really quick, you could see all the other ones I've written in already, but I'm not going to show you what I wrote. But you could just see in my column. Makes it for there. It's all written in, so I'm not I'm not altering anything. Just when I hear what you pick, then changing mine. Just and to clarify, in our little game, uh, it is one point for getting the pit right, another bonus point for the right number of games, correct. and it carries over from rounds to round. We're not predicting the whole playoffs today, although correct. I will We're not right. Although I will ask you, yeah. I will ask you who you think will win the Stanley Cup. So be prepared for that. I, uh, I may not answer, but that's okay. Wait or I may just throw out something ridiculous just to make you laugh. But anyway, this one, you know what? The only thing interesting about this series is going to be is the only thing I wish is that Washington would push the Rangers hard and bang them up a little bit so that the Rangers get worn down for the next series because the Rangers are a, are a really good team and I don't want them. I, I don't want them in the, I, I don't want them to represent the Eastern Conference where the Jets meet them in the Stanley Cup final. Oops, sorry. So, but any the only reason I'm going to be watching this is to see how many more goals uh, Alex Ovechkin scores to add to his running total to try and catch Wayne Gretzky. That's the only thing of interest to me in this whole series is going to be. I don't know what you're going to see, but for me, that'll be the only thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, can they avoid the sweep? Can they get this to a James Six? Uh, Washington, to me, just seemed like a team without a jazz. And we saw that in the last week of the season. And I don't know how you overcome that. I'd be shocked if Washington wins this series. I'll be, even though I picked them in five, I'll be surprised if Washington wins one game. Like, I'm just trying to think what would be the scenario where Washington wins um, a game? Like, that the Rangers, um, their, uh, you know, like their airplane breaks down and they're not able to get to Washington. Or when they get to the airport, then their uh, transit bus or, you know, the bus that shuttles them from the airport to the hotel or to the rink um, has a flat tire and they miss the game. So they have to forfeit the game like that. I, I don't know what other scenario that you could uh, try and figure out to explain how they're going to win a game. But it's the playoffs, right? You watch, you watch, everything is going to be tighter. Everything is, you say, oh, this is going to be, and I know that, that's why I got to be careful. You could pick according to the regular season, but you can't because it's, the games are going to be close. I just don't think there's going to be these games, even Washington and Rangers. I don't see these being like six, nothing games, the Rangers over Washington. I just don't. Maybe 3-2 with an empty netter, they win 4-2. Maybe, maybe five two with a couple empty net goals. Like I, I don't think these are just going to be six nothing, eight nothing games. Rangers over the Washington, even though that's what they should be according to paper, because Washington is just not that good a team right now compared to the Rangers. All you need is to win by one this time of year. Correct. Yeah. Let's talk about our next series. Okay. I have a feeling we might go different here, but time will tell. Metropolitan number two, the Carolina Hurricanes hosting the Metropolitan number three in yes, a series sir. that begins tomorrow afternoon. That, wait, that is correct. Yeah, I saw here the first game tomorrow is um yeah, is Carolina with uh hosting the Islanders. Actually, there's only two games, and then there's the Bruins and the Leafs in the prime time, and yep. then there's there's four on Sunday. Wow, that's like a quadruple header. I thought it was a triple header. It's a quadruple header. It's like the it's like the Lightning and the Panthers at 11.30, the Rangers and the Capitals at 2 o'clock, Colorado, Winnipeg, 6 o'clock, and then Nashville, Vancouver, 9 o'clock. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. yep. And then the other two series, they haven't even put them into the NHL or they haven't put them into with TSN or into NHL.com. Because I've been looking, I don't see them. Here yeah, they schedule. start on Monday. They start on Monday. Okay. So, okay. So, what do you like about this series, Carolina and? 
I like everything. I like the highly octane offense against a team that likes to play defense in the New York Islanders. Um, Patrick Wah pushing all the right buttons um, to uh, get this Islanders squad into the playoffs who found some goaltending against the Carolina team who was right up at or near and around the uh, – the New York Rangers for the better part of the season as far as the division goes. Um, so that'll be very, very exciting. Um, I, I really compare this to a who do, which type of series are we going to get? The team that can defend very well, the team that can score very well, and both teams have great goaltending. Uh to me, it comes down to depth. I like Carolina depth a little bit more, but Ilya Sorokin and Simeon Varlamov can be a pretty good um, can be a pretty good uh, pairing when it comes to goaltending. Uh, I do like Pito to shut up uh, and the Carolina netminder Freddie Anderson. Uh, I've been contrary to stats. It's all about who's going to come into the series playing really well. And, and the Islanders have done that. And Patrick Bois seems to have pushed all the right buttons with Lou Lamarella. I'll let you give your explanation before I give my pitch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, New York Islanders, everything that you're saying is true. They're actually, if I look here, I'm just looking at. Are they? Yeah, they are. Even more so than the Jets. I think the Jets are tied with Dallas for being the second hottest team in the last 10 games. The hottest team in the last 10 games is the New York Islanders. They're 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10. The Jets and the Stars are 8-2. and two. So I'm saying the Islanders are a very hot team right now, but that could be a product too of who you're playing, what your schedule's like. Maybe you're playing a lot of teams in the last 10 games that aren't in a playoff position or fighting for one. So that can be part of it. My concern with the Islanders, as great a job as uh, Patrick Roy has done coaching, is this team lost a lot of games in overtime. Like when you look at, if you count an overtime loss the same as a regular, like a loss is a loss, combine overtime losses and re uh, uh, regular time losses, they're at 43 losses. Like they, they've they lost more games than they've won this year, if you look at that. And their goal differential is minus 17. So they, they play really well, or they play really well or pretty well at the home. They're 500 or a little bit below 500 on, on the road. And that's the problem. Now they go on the road and they go into a into a lion's den like uh, Carolina has, where they won times at home and have a loud crowd behind them. So to me this as much as I like the Islanders more than I liked Washington against New York Rangers. I like Islanders more against Carolina. I just see there's too much um, like disparity between these two teams in terms of how they play. You say New York Islanders play well defensively. Yeah, I guess, but they're still not great. They still let in a ton of goals. So um that's kind of how I see it, even with Patrick Waugh. I, and I also just don't think, on, on paper anyway, the Islanders, they've got some good, I mean, they got Anders Lee, they got Matt Barzal, they, they got some good hockey players there. But overall, I don't think they have as much scoring power, as much balanced scoring as Carolina does for the Islanders to compete line after line after line and shift change after shift change with Carolina as Carolina can compete with them. So that's kind of how I see it. They're just very unevenly matched that way, line by line. You ready to make pits? Sure. Do you want me to go first? Upset. I'm going upset special Islanders in seven. That makes me very happy because that's how I'm going to be able to get up a few points on you in this uh, first round. So that's good. Uh, New York Islanders in seven. Well, I'm not going out on a limb. I I go with facts, even though there will be some upsets. There always is. Remember last year? There's always upsets. You don't see them coming. There always is. Yep. I got some upsets 
what am I saying? Out of this, how many series I went to through five? There's eight, right? Eight series. I actually picked upsets in two of the eight. So that might shock you. I don't know how many you picked. I picked two. Just strictly, if you look, as it's upset, but just strictly by where, like, who has home ice advantage, that would be the favorite. I'm just looking at it that way, right? Even though, let's say, like, for the Jets and the Avalanche, there's only a difference of, what is that, th three points between the two teams? I think it's three. Yeah, 110 versus 100. They're almost identical records. So, But I would consider if the Avalanche would win against the Jets, I just consider that to be an upset because they're lower in the standings. So, But that being said, I like Carolina here. I just do not see, barring some catastrophic issue with their goaltending, which could happen, I just don't see this as being a problem at all for Carolina. There's just too much separation between Carolina and the Islanders in so many aspects of their games. So I'm picking Carolina in five. Oh, another Twitch series. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. But that's okay. Let's go over to the Atlanta Division of Eastern Conference and the Battle of Florida between the Lightning and the Panthers, meeting for the third time in four years in the playoffs. Yeah. This is... A resurgent lightning team in the Sutton half, but have seemed to find their playoff game again. A gentle wagon in the Florida Panthers, a team a few days short of the Stanley Cup last year, uh, losing out to the Vegas Golden Knights. This, to me, is going to be a challenge for both teams in the fact that I think both teams still have aspiration of winning the Stanley Cup, although the tour is not there for Tampa like it once was. Tampa knows how to play playoff hockey. Florida has been ready for this. They were battle-tested. They got through Boston last year, who won the President's Trophy. They got through uh, Toronto last year, and then memory escapes me who they beat in the Eastern Conference Final. Was it was it the Rangers? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, en route to a Stanley Cup um, finals appearance before bowing out to the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, I like this in goal. Vasilevsky against Babrowski. The defense is relatively even, although Florida's D has a bit of an advantage. Uh, Kucherov, Stamkos, those types of guys going head-to-head -head with Bennett and uh, to chat, I think this series did be mean. I think it did be nasty. Um, I think of all the series, this will have the most combined hits when it's all said and done. Discipline is going to be T and the penalty kill and the power plays for the respective teams are going to have to be at the top of their game. Yeah, I would agree. Do you have any further insight, or are we ready to make the prediction? Um, no, I – well, I, I just, again, down the stretch, they're they're both roughly the same. Like the Lightning have been 5-4-1, and one, so they're basically playing 500 hockey. Um, Florida's one game above 500 over the last 10. Um, Florida's won their last four. Tampa just won their last game against the Leafs now to end the season on a on a positive note. But um, one thing about Tampa, they score a ton of goals. They're one of the top score. I think they're the second highest. I think number one is, if I'm not mistaken, if I saw it yet, Tampa's at 291. I think the only one that scored more goals this year than them. Oh, Edmonton and the Dallas scored more goals. But Tampa Bay scores a ton of goals. And so if they get a little bit of net mining from Vasilevsky and a little bit of defensive play and maybe frustrate the Panthers, maybe it's possible. But um, I agree with you. I think this is going to be a hard-fought series. These two teams are only separated by roughly 10 points in the standings, only a couple of wins. Um, oh, wait, I'm not looking here. Wait, sorry. No more than a couple of wins, sorry. Uh, by seven wins, yeah. Um but they, um, but Florida plays very good team defense, and uh, Bobrovsky is hard to beat. So I'm just as much as I like Tampa, 
I like what they've done. I like Anthony DeClaire on that team. He was a nice addition. Um, and there, you know who they remind me of a lot of like the Penguins about three or four years ago. That's exactly where Tampa Bay is now. Like they're they're at that point where yeah, they could win one more time, but they might not have just quite enough. The Penguins, yeah, they don't have enough. They're way off the radar, but they're close. But I just don't see Florida. I think they have got something to prove. Last year was a fluke. They snuck in the last game of the season and cruised all the way to the final. Or is it cruising not the right way? Worked their cans off all the way to the final to, to lose to Vegas. And that's only because a, a, a Kachuk got hurt and he couldn't play anymore. And he's a key to that team. So I just think Florida's on a mission. They know what it takes. And as long as everyone stays healthy in that team, they are going to be tough to beat. They play well defensively. That is a good hockey team, Florida. I, I don't see many weaknesses on that team, but that's kind of how I see it. So are you going to let me pick first this time, or you want me to pick first? Uh, you can pick first. Okay. Or I can or say pick first. I can let you know what my um, decision is. So, again, here um, I look at facts. I don't pick by emotion. I look at many situations, as I shared, and I don't go off the board. That's another thing your folks are going to figure out when they when they listen to our show. If I say I like this, 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 this about Florida, and then oh yeah, Tampa. I you know what I like this one thing, and I don't just turn around and then I pick Tampa in four straight. Like I I'm not like that. That's what you do. You you like to throw people and when you set them up like that. I don't do that for people. I'm pretty consistent. So long story short, I like the Panthers in this series. It's going to be hard. I agree with you. It's not going to be easy. I think Tampa Bay is going to outscore their problems in a couple of games, and I like Florida in six. Yeah, see, I was going to – sorry. Okay, yeah. No, no, I just want to make sure I heard you right. I have Florida winning, but in seven. Uh, I need to be a homer series uh, for both sides. Okay. And I uh, have the Panthers winning in seven. Vasilevsky tips the lightning in the series. Okay. And that's not a crazy pick. I could have easily been persuaded to say Florida in seven. So. All right. We'll have to move in the line a little bit quicker. Rick. We only have 29 minutes left. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about the other East quarter final. The Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. Two teams that do not like each other, particularly when it comes to playoff hockey. Brad Marchand. And I'm paraphrasing called the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Boston Bruins' biggest rival when it comes to the playoffs. Paraphrasing today. Uh, Leafs coming into the playoffs having lost their last four games. Sheldon Chief did not seem concerned about it. Leafs are buoyed by 69 goal scorer Austin Matthews, unable to get number 70. And here we go again with the Leafs. Bruins lost their top two centers. A, no problem in the running for the division title. And, well, they just keep rolling right along because that's all. So, wait, the Bruins know what to do come playoff time. Uh, for the Leafs, rather, it's the same old story. The big four with the top D and everybody else around the Frame, question marks in goal for the Leafs, more so than in goal for the Bruins. Here we go again. Leafs fans' worst nightmares about to become reality on another playoff edition of the Leafs and Bruins. Yeah. The Leafs, if you if you look at, like, the Leafs, they actually, I, I was mistaken. I didn't see this. I was looking at the wrong column. The Leafs are the number one offense in the league. They're the only team to have scored over 300 goals um, during the regular season. They're plus 40 goal differential, but they're horrible defensively. They led in two six. Like they're plus 40, but like we've talked about, they try to outscore their defensive problems. Great in the regular season, in the playoffs where every inch of ice is fought for, where it's really tough to score unless you're getting lots of power plays and you're able to convert on the power play, 
guys are in the playoffs. More guys are blocking shots and jumping in front of shots and lunging and stopping everything. It's very hard to get shots through in the power play. Very hard to score in the power play. Toronto, it, I know there's people out there that say, oh, this is the year for the Leafs. No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to be the one to burst your bubble, Toronto fans. I was watching some guy online and he says the only, like they're talking about all my wishes. And it was, this is the year that my Leafs are finally going to win the Stanley Cup in my lifetime. And I just, I felt bad for him. I said, no, they're not. They're just not. Because in my mind, I'll put this back to you. I think the Leafs are a are a poor a poor team. The Leafs are not as good this year as they were last year. In my mind, just overall, the whole team, goaltending, defense, offense, everything. Yes, Matthews had a great year. Yes, they outscored a ton of problems. They're exciting to watch. They could score a ton of goals when they're healthy and they're able to find ice to play. But this team doesn't know how to play defense. And in the playoffs, you have to have teams and you have to have, to have a goaltender you can rely on. Boston can rely on Swayman. I don't know who the who, who are the Leafs going to rely on. Wall? Samsonov. Jones? Samsonov? Yeah. It's been a revolving door all year. Not always the player's fault. It's been sometimes injuries, sometimes of different things. I'm just saying, like, with the Jets, you know, it's Hellebuck. Boom. It's done. With the, with the Canucks. It's Sedemko. Boom. Bang. You know. That's not a problem. You know who their goalie is. The Leafs? I don't know. What happens if the Leafs get beat? Like in game one, they go with Samson off and they lose game one, six to two. Yeah. Do you think Samson cool, is going to play game two? Do you think he's going to play game two? I don't think so. I yeah, think the goaltending goal goal kind of question kind of looms. It's huge. So for all those reasons, I, I just, I'm sorry, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. I'm sorry, Tim Horton. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They are not going to win this series. And I'm picking the Bruins to win in six games. I still think the Leafs are going to outscore their problems in a couple of games. Maybe they get a few extra power plays and they're able to do it. But I think they win. The Bruins win in six. And so you I have had a deliberation this afternoon because I went on another podcast this morning and I pit the Leafs in six. I pit with my heart instead of my head. So in this instance, I'm going to pit with my head and not okay. my heart. Okay. And I'm going to agree with Red for once. That's okay. And say the Boston Bruins are going to win this series and it's going to be done in seven. Okay, they're going to win on home ice. Okay. The see, Bruins I, are going to win on home ice in a 2-1 game. Okay, and see, for me, I just want the Bruins just to jab it, like to put a, a like a needle in the eye of all the Leafs fans and win at uh, Air Canada Centre in Game 6. That, that's what, really that, that brings me so much joy. So Really okay. quickly, let's move out west. The okay. number one team in the Pacific taking on the number one wild card, the Vancouver Canucks and the Nashville Predators. Both teams with strong runs to their season. To get here, Vancouver pre-Christmas on a clip. Nashville had a 14-0-2 uh, run to get to uh, a playoff spot and uh, maintain a playoff spot. Thatcher Demko against UC Zaros. Quinn Hughes against uh, Roman Yossi. Three Adam Lowry Lions against uh, for Nashville against Vancouver Lions, but you don't know what you're going to get, especially in the second half. Uh, it's been win a couple, lose a couple for the Tanats. Almost blew a 14-point division lead to the Edmonton Oilers and have not exactly inspired a ton of confidence uh, in myself with the play of second half. Uh, Elias Lindholm, one of the biggest trade deadline acquisitions in recent memory for the Vancouver Canucks, has been rather quiet, notwithstanding his role last night at Canada Life Center. Uh, I do love the Vancouver Canucks defense. Uh, I think they're big. I think they're strong. I think they're mobile. Uh, Myers, Zadaroff, um, 
Beta Acquisition, Myers in free agency years ago from the Jets, Zadaroff from Calgary. Vancouver uh, has an underrated big size D, but this to me is, is Elias Patterson going to show up with the lights of Philip Forsberg tying a career high in goals this year and a Nashville team that is not afraid to muck it up in the corners and make this one ugly and rely on their goaltending and win a one or two goal hockey game. Mm-hmm. This to me does not deserve to be a number one versus a wild card. I honestly think it's a two and three in the middle of the division and Nashville went on that second half run doing exactly the way Nashville needs to play hockey. And this will be a great series contrary uh, to the standings and each team's uh, place in the standings. I'm looking forward to the home buildings uh, for both these teams, uh, smashing the cars in Nashville and getting playoff hockey back in Vancouver. Yep. Thoughts, opinions, suggestions? Um, no, I agree. I think this is going to be I, – well, I just think in general, except for maybe the Panthers and the Lightning series out east, I think the four series in um, in the west are all very compelling. That's why I picked them all to be longer series, and I picked my two upsets in, in this conference as well because I, I just think – teams one through eight here that made the playoffs in the West there there's not a lot of action that separates them like they're they're all good teams they're all good like if you told me at the end oh this team from the East is going to play any one of these eight teams from the West like if you told me Vancouver like if you're able to look at the future and tell me uh nine eight weeks from now or seven weeks from now Vancouver is representing the West I'd say yeah you know what I could see that or if you told me the Oilers got there, yeah, I could see that. Or Dallas or Winnipeg, Colorado. Like none of these teams would surprise me. If you told me Washington's going to be representing the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup Finals, I would say, uh, I think you've had something um, to eat or drink that's uh, infringing with your brain because uh, you're you're off your rocker. But on the West, I could see it happening anywhere here. I like this series. I think it's where there's going to be an upset. So are you ready to hear my pick? You want my pick first? Okay, you go first. So you're not influenced. I'm picking Nashville in seven. I really like Nashville. I like them to win this series. I think Nashville just gives a little more when it comes to a one-off. Uh, Nashville has also played extremely well on the road. Vancouver has a lot of pressure being back in the playoffs and being the number one seed. I'm picking Nashville in seven. Good for you. I have Nashville in six. So there you go. Okay. Yeah, so we're both a little hesitant on Vancouver. Um, um, yeah, just, but I, you know what? But for me, it's as much I'm hesitant about Vancouver as I am quite bullish on the Nashville. I, I think it's the combination of the two that brings me to my upset choice. So. All right, okay. let's move on to the other day, the other matchup on that side of the bracket, the number two Ooh. team in the Pacific, the Edmonton Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings. Yes, yes, yes. That you're rubbing your hands together. I've been I, I'm going to enjoy this series. About this These series. teams I'll hate you, each other. These teams you, hate each other. <laughs> I will let you do the rundown for this series since you are so excited about it. They hate each other. The Oilers beat the Kings last year and the Kings hate them. Drew Doughty, he has, I guarantee you, he has a dartboard in his basement with um with Patrick Kane, Connor McDavid, and Leon Dreisaitl all on dartboards and he just throws darts all summer. That was his training. It wasn't lifting weights, it wasn't on the on the elliptical, it was just throwing darts. He can't, they can't stand each other, these two teams. These two teams, when they play, it's nasty. And you got guys on each team that are nasty guys. Uh, this is going to be a great series to watch. I don't really care who wins because I just hope they each, you know, knock the crap out of each other. So it makes it easier for the Jets to make it to the Stanley Cup finals. Ooh, sorry, I said it again. Anyway, um, but 
this is another series where I think it is there's not as much of a spread as people want to believe between these two teams. In the standings, there's only a difference of five points. It's um, LA tied a lot more games or got a lot more games to overtime than Edmonton did. Edmonton won four more games, but uh, LA got five more games to overtime, which means a difference of five points. Their um, LA scores, sorry, LA scores fewer goals, but they let in fewer goals. Uh, LA is better on the road than Edmonton, which bodes well for uh, playing in the playoffs. The Oilers, they were kings at home. Sorry for that pun, but the Oilers were kings at home, but they were a 500 hockey team on the road. So there's a lot of reasons why I really like LA over Edmonton in the series. And LA has also played a lot better down the stretch than Edmonton. Edmonton's just plodding along. There are a couple of games under 500 over the last 10, partly probably because they had McDavid out of the lineup, but still. How about you? What do you like or what, what do you yeah, see? In I, I can't argue with what you said. Um, I made the joke this morning on another podcast, but some people might be grateful that this series is in the Pacific time zone because LA likes to kind of bore you playing that one, two, one sort of system. Yeah. While Edmonton likes to open it up a little bit. Um, this series has posed the Oilers the most trouble over the years. It's now three straight years where this teams are going to meet in the first round. And really in the first two years, there's been instances in this series where it could have gone either way. Uh, overtime win here, overtime win there. Late goal there shifts it in LA's favor. That being said, I like Connor McDavid. I like uh, Timon. I like Stu Skinner most of all over the option of Cam Talbot at this point. And I'm just going to go right ahead and make my pick. And say the Oilers are going to win this series in six games at Crypto.com Arena in L.A. And go on to play the Nashville Predators in my bracket in round number two. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, I do not like the Oilers in this series. I think they're going to win some games. There's no question of that. But... I just think the L.A. plays better defense. I'm still not sold on Stuart Skinner or whoever else they're going to throw in that net. And in the playoffs, you can't outscore your problems, although the Oilers are going to try. They've added more depth than they've had in the past. But I think this is the year that L.A. bounces back against Edmonton and they revenge in seven or in um, in a series back over uh, over the Oilers. I like L.A. in six games. They went at home in game six. All right, let's get to the series. Well, not quite everybody's been waiting for it, but I think has the most intrigue, and that is the last quarterfinal. C1 against WC2, the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. How do you see this one, Matt? I like this series. I like it a lot. Um you have the Stanley Cup winner from last year going through a lot of tough time, but then bringing back some players from injury, putting the band back together, and now going up against the number one team in um, in the Western Conference in the Dallas Stars. And uh, Dallas has played very well down the stretch. Uh, Vegas has played pretty good down the stretch, but... Um, I like this series. I think it's going to be hard fought. And you know what the other thing I like? I think we talked about this on the show uh, during the week. These two teams are very similar. They are there. They have no really, you know, super, superstar. I think they have a lot of really good players, each of them. They have very good defense. They move the puck well. They play their system well. They get balanced scoring. One night it could be this line. The next night it's another line. Their power plays are pretty good. Their penalty killing is pretty good. Their goaltending is good, somewhat unproven um, in Hill and Ottinger. I mean, Hill won the, the cup last year with help from Lauren Brassois. But that being said, they're very similar teams just in their style of play, how they play, what they do, how they do it. So they're very evenly matched. 
that's how I see this series being very evenly matched. How about you? Yeah, I, this, to me, this comes down to one thing. Goaltending Jake Ottinger against either Aiden Hill or whoever the other goaltender is uh, for uh, the uh, Vegas, Golden, uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Uh, looks like Mark Stone, looks like Alex Petrangelo is going to return at some point in the series, maybe even in game one. Uh, it's a wow. miracle. Sorry? It's a miracle. It is. Uh, Dallas, four lines deep, sits DD. I like the additions of Chris Tanev. I also like the additions of uh, Noah Hannafin and uh, Thomas Thomas Hurdle from the Sharks. I also like um, a lot of things about Vegas. I just, I'm not sure about their goaltending uh, for a while already. Um, since November, it feels like the Vegas Golden Knights have been hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold. Um, personally, did not like what I saw last night in their game. Um, okay. Game where they could have won and secured a matchup with the Oilers and... Uh, how did that end up? Well, I'll let the matchup on the screen describe it. Um, no, I, I just, I think the Dallas Stars are going to win this series just on goaltending. I think Ottinger is better than whatever goaltender the Knights are going to throw in this series. I need to be seven. I need to be brutal. And I need to be overtime. Overtime in game seven, Logan Stantoven, GWG, and the Stars survive. So the Stars in seven. Yep. Same as Ricky Doodle. Sorry? Same as Ricky Doodle. Oh, he yeah. did. You did pit the stars. Of course. Uh, you did. Of okay. Course. I like Vegas. It could go Vegas in seven, could easily, but I want to see somebody else win the Stanley Cup. I don't like the same team winning year after year after year. So that's why I wanted Vegas out in the first round. So. Just okay. a quick update in the MJHL final. Winkler has just opened the score late in the second period. It's a game I have on here on a monitor in the studio while you and I are talking. Excuse me. Yes, they're uh, up against Steinbach, uh, right? Let's get to the series that everybody wants to talk about, and that is the Winnipeg Jets and the Colorado Avalanche. And Winkler has just scored again with one second left in the second period. They now lead 2 nothing. Uh, anyway, that's MJHL final game number one uh, from Neverville, temporary home of Steinbeck Pistons. Um, your thoughts on this series? Um, well, these two teams, just looking here, these two teams are, I mean, if you're looking at an opening round, I think these two teams are the most evenly matched of all the other series in terms of the teams and who's playing. Like if you look at Edmonton and LA, they're not that close together. The other matchups that are uh, two, three, even the Bruins and the Leafs, they're seven points apart. Carolina and New York is like, yeah, is that 90 front and front and front? Yeah. That's like almost 20 points. The Jets and the, and the Avalanche are only three points. Yeah. And then five, but, these two teams each won over 50 games. These two teams each have a huge plus minus differential. Uh, oh, look at this. See, I missed this goal. Colorado did score the most amount of goals. Maybe I, I'm sorry I missed that. I thought that was the Leafs. Colorado scored the most goals in the year three in the old season, 304. But they also let in an obscene amount of goals, 254. They are bears at home, but they're dogs on the road. Colorado is not good. They are. What is that? They're, they're three games under 500 on the road for the season. The Jets are almost the same record on the road on at home. Sorry, I the think they're two better home. at home and on the well, road. That's almost that. Then you're splitting oranges. That, that 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 doesn't mean anything. But Colorado, they're great at home. They stink on ice on the road. They're not good. Their goaltending has been suspy, to use a phrase for my kids, all year long. They do not have Varlamov in net like they did two years ago, three years ago, right? It was when they – or was it actually – no, it was Varlamov with the um, yeah. Gruber, right? Wasn't it the two of them? Together? It was Grubauer, yeah. It, it was Grubauer? It wasn't Varlamov? Yeah, it was, it was Grubauer. Okay, it was Grubauer. That's what I thought because, you know, you said last time on our last show it was – Yeah, Varlamov. no, and I went and looked it up. 
Yeah, it is was Grubar. See, so they don't have Grubar now anymore. They've got Georgiev or Gorgiev or however you pronounce it. He has been, he's won 38 games this year. Like he's he's won a ton of games, but it's only because the team outscores their defensive problems, including his net minding. They let in a ton of goals. Like I'm just looking here, like 254 goals against that. I'm going to look at all the other teams. There is nobody in the playoffs, well, except for Washington and New York Islanders. So they're right there with the Islanders and Washington in terms of, and the Leafs in terms of letting goals against. So Colorado is a good offensive team. They've got three great players in Rantanen, McKinnon, and McCarr. If the Jets can neutralize those three guys, stay out of the penalty box, make it hard for McKinnon, play a team defensive game, and Hellebuck play like Hellebuck can play, the Jets win the series. There, there's just no question because the Avalanche can't match up against them. Five on five, four lines, uh, defensive structure, goals against average, playing at home or on the road. Uh, you know, the Jets just win in so many categories. And for me, the biggest thing, when I, I heard all the hockey experts talking over and over again, Marty Baron said it best. He said, for me, it comes down to go. I mean, he's a goaltender, so he knows this. For me in the playoffs, it's about having consistent, great goaltending. When your team doesn't play well, you need your goalie to make a big save in the playoffs. You think about, like we think about when the Avalanche won, Grubar. Last year was Aiden Hill with, um, with Vegas making saves when he needed to. If that's what they get out of Hellebuck, they're not, Colorado's not going to get that out of Georgiev. The Jets win this series. And that's not emotion, that's fact. I turn it over to you. I'm not going to repeat anything you said that I 100% agree. I'm going to go straight to my pet Winnipeg in six. Winnipeg in six? Wow, they're going to win on the road in Colorado. Wow. That's gutsy. Yes, Rob, we're getting we're getting your comment. I'm just gonna I'm just going to uh I'm just going to uh display them after. Yeah, you know what? My thing is is I, I just realized I can't join the chat because I'm not able to connect into YouTube right now because I don't have an account. I gotta set that up. So but anyway, you have to have a YouTube account, right? Okay, see, hang on one second here, Rick. I'll uh I'll turn that on for you manually while you give your pet. Okay. So I, I'm also reading what Rob and a few other people have been mentioning here. Um, yes, we're seeing the comments. Um, oh, it is on on your end. Okay. Right, but I have to connect to YouTube account, right? That's what and I don't, I don't think so. You should just be able to see it. No, it says when I hit connect, then it says choose an account. Oh, okay. Okay, then you must connect. Okay. Well, well, I'll run through Rob's comments just on the way out. So okay. give your pet, give your Stanley Cup pet, and we'll go from there. Well, he's got a gutsy call here. He's saying Jets in five. I like it. Rob is I, – I like it. He doesn't um, wishy-washy, you know, what are the Jets going to do in the next uh, ten games like Michael? Oh, they're going to go 4-4-2. Four, four, and two. Like Rob, Rob he, he makes a call and he sticks by it and he goes with his guns, and I like that. I like the Jets in the series. I think it's going to be hard fought. I think the Jets are going to lose some games. I, I I just think there's going to be times where Colorado, they're not going to be able to keep up with McKinnon and with that power play with McCarr, Ranton, and, and, and McKinnon. I think there are going to be times where they're going to, those guys are going to outscore their problems and they're going to outscore the defense that the Jets can throw at them. But I still like the Jets in the series. I, I could see the Jets winning. In five, six, or seven, I just picked seven. I didn't. Um, I didn't want to change it. I've been wishy-washy though. I could have easily picked the Jets. Oh, where's my finger out of it? I could have easily picked the Jets. In uh, what is in your pick? Winnipeg in seven. I can't see that. Yeah, Winnipeg in seven. Okay. But, probably but I changed it once. Still on Saturday night. Who knows? What's that? Game seven on a Saturday night, but could very well be on ABC. Yeah, it, like it, it's it's not going to be on Sportsnet, eh? That or, well, or no, hey, it is on Sportsnet. Um, but the, but they won't have Sportsnet broadcasters though. That's going to be 
They're like, oh, they're yeah. going to get to see. Yeah. Oh, they will? No, I'm, just, I'm just saying the American channels. Oh, okay. Sportsnet and CBC are splitting the Jets series to the Reds concurrent with Vancouver. So, okay. That, that's the way that's going to work. So, so, Red Petty, in two months from now, we're sitting here. Who are we watching in the Salmon Cup final and who is your pick? Okay, well, okay, let me just summarize here. It's interesting. You and I each picked six favorites and the two upsets. Your upset is the Islanders over Carolina and Nashville over Vancouver. I picked Nashville over Vancouver as well, but I also picked um, LA over Edmonton. So we, we each picked the favorites in six out of eight series. Stanley Cup final. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. I will give you my... Okay, this is what I'll do. I will give you my heart pick, and then I will give you my head pick. How about that? Yeah, that's probably a good way to end um, it. Hey, right? okay, go ahead. Okay, so my heart pick is the Jets, excuse me, against um, the Rangers. And the Jets win in the Stanley Cup final and stick it to Jacob Truba for a jamming on the Jets. After oh, that team. would be way too dead. Yeah. And the Jets winning at home where they can march around the Stanley Cup and the home ice rink while Jacob Truba sits in the visitor's dressing room and watches it on TV in the, in the, that would be just like chef's kiss. So that's my, that's my heart. My head tells me it's going to be Florida and it's going to be Dallas. Yeah. That's and exactly I, where I am. Yeah. Florida. And I believe that this year, the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. I agree with that hundred percent. So, but I, that's could change. That's only now, but after each round, we're going to, and this could change when we get to the football. Well, obviously, if we get to the semi or we get to the final and it's the Hurricanes against the Canucks, well, I'm not picking the, the Jets and, or, the, yeah. or the Panthers, right? But right now, that, that's what I would do. How about for you? So, what, what is your heart? Right, pick? So my head. Is heart pick? Is... And you can't say, you can't say Toronto against Winnipeg. Well, my head pick. Heart, is, heart. I know your your head pick you said was so uh, in my heart of hearts. Heart. Yeah, Leafs and Jets in the top final. Oh my gosh! With the Jets winning in five and winning it at ten at the Life Center, realist me has Florida over Dallas in six. Oh, wait, wait a second. I don't. Wouldn't the Jets like who gets home ice advantage? Toronto it wouldn't have home ice advantage in the final, would they? Jets would get home ice advantage over the Leafs. Yeah, but then why would you say they win it at – oh, you said win it in the game five at home? Win a game five at home, yeah. Okay. I'd say, so if, in the world listen, of worlds. Uh, listen, if the Jets and the Leafs make it to the Stanley Cup final, like I'm just – maybe we'll just end in this. If the Jets and the Leafs make it to the Stanley Cup final, I mean – Canada is going to be going crazy because number one, a Canadian team is going to win the Stanley Cup, which is amazing. That would be great. It's been yeah. over 30 years, I think, since it was done. So that's number one. Number two, either way, who wins? Like if Toronto wins, I, I will be extremely disappointed, but I'll be happy for lifetime the Leafers like you who are, can finally say you know, the Leafs are a Stanley Cup champion. But can you imagine if the Jets beat the Leafs in the Stanley Cup finals? I can you imagine, like, this city is going to go crazy. There'll be no car burning, like, in Vancouver. <clears throat> but there could literally be a party on the streets in June in Winnipeg for a month straight. People could just up working, park their cars downtown, and just camp out there for days on end partying. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Putting... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I'm done. I, I, I'm done. I, I like Rob's pick there. I, I like that. The Jets take the series in five. I, I like that. I wish I could be that bold. I don't have I, I don't have the guts like Rob does. So, uh, But it's possible. Yeah. Listen, if the Jets play their game the way they played Colorado and the way they've played the last eight, if they play that way, they can win in five games against Colorado. They, yeah, they, they, can they, they might go 16 and 0 if they played the way they have the last two weeks. Oh. They can win the first two games at home. They could split in Colorado and then come home and win at, at home again. Like if they're up 3 1 coming home, I don't think the Avalanche have anything in the tank to win three straight against the Jets. That's my opinion. But anyway, 
be interesting to last see. Last question on the way out. Rob just has a bunch of comments that I want to post. Um, uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, oh, yeah. Red Bonus says uh, Morgan Barron won't be ready to go for game one on Sunday. No problem. Insert David Gustafson. Is, is that confirmed? It will be Gustafson. Yeah, he confirmed it today. Okay. Um, Swayman and Omar are supposedly going to share the goaltending duties. That surprises Charles me. And Yossi could steal the series for the Preds. MGHO update is now 2 0. Uh, and then Rob says Jets keep the series in five. So, yeah. So, what excites you most about the playoffs just on your way out? Uh, like I said, I think for the most part, except for maybe uh, Washington against uh, New York Rangers and probably Carolina against the Islanders, to me, the other six series. Are all pickums? They're they're all very competitive series. I, I guess it's possible um, that Washington could give New York Rangers a run for their money. It's possible because they're rivals, and it's possible the Islanders could play really good defensively and give all sorts of trouble to Carolina. It's possible. Sure, anything's possible, but I just don't see that those series really being tossums or pickums, whatever you want to call it. But the other six series, I think, are going to be very compelling. It would not surprise me. I mean, we picked the series in six games, five or whatever. It would not shock me at all that all series, except for Carolina, New York Islanders, and Washington, New York Rangers, the other six series, they go seven games. That would not shock me at all because the league is so evenly evenly um, divided, and there's just so many talented teams. All the teams in the playoffs are talented teams. None of them, except for Washington, none of them are a fluke. So... All right, we are scheduled to be back at 5 p.m. next Wednesday night, I think is what we had read on. Well, you put that out there. We'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, Tentative, yep. Yeah. Our plan is to be back next Wednesday, um, which will be after the first two games of the Jets series to talk about uh, a couple of things. Uh, are you sure the Jets aren't playing Sunday, Wednesday? They're playing Sunday, Tuesday? No, it's Sunday, Tuesday. 100%? 100%, yeah. No, because I heard talk it might be Sunday, Wednesday. Yeah, no, that's what I heard last night, and then the schedule came out Okay. Um, with a interesting part is they did an early afternoon game in Denver next Sunday, a 1.30 face-off uh, central time. game four? Yeah, game four, yeah. Is game three on Friday? Game three is on Friday at 9 o'clock, yeah. Okay, so there's an extra day of travel between the two cities then. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be that. Anyway, enjoy the playoffs. We're out of here. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Uh, record audiences tonight watching us. Appreciated. And we will be back with you about middle of the round, shooting for Wednesday sometime here on Game Time Platform. This has been the Ultimate Hockey Show. Stanley Cup Playoff Preview tonight from Winnipeg.